9, heading 185, reduce speed 182 knots. 185 on the heading 180 on the speed go fair 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 knots to 40 mean. Hello there guys, Matt here, hope you are all well and welcome back to another video. Now, in today's video, I am going to show you how I set my P3D up and use the add-on XML method to be able to have my scenery loaded in a kind of dynamic uh, off-site way, if you will, and also to show you the way I have my P3D set up in terms of actual game settings. Oh dear, I called it a game. So, here we are on my desktop using the Meta Simulations wallpaper because the guy that works for us called Govan, he's the art guy, is an incredible branding person and he made this, it's very nice. Uh, so you can see my desktop is very blank, but that's because I, I hid my uh, icons because it looked a mess. So. First of all, actually, people are going to say, how do you make your start bar look like this? Well, this is a program called Start 10. If you Google, let's open up Google, Start 10, you'll go to Stardock, and then from Stardock, you can buy it. It's literally like $3 or something. It's ridiculously cheap. Um, and what that does is that replaces the... Uh, tile thing that Windows 10 has and puts the Windows 7 uh, way of doing things back in which is exactly what I needed in life so that's that if you want to configure it you right click the actual start button and then configure start 10 and you'll see that it can do a bunch of things and you can change like the icon for example if you really wanted to uh, or you could uh, choose your own etc so there you go that's the start bar Okay, right, on to P3D. So, if I open up my computer, or this PC in Windows 10, uh, I have multiple hard drives. This is my local disk, and then I've got some uh, European ortho, I've got a uh, storage drive, and I've also got some US ortho. Now, these 10 terabyte drives, both of these, actually, that's the 12 terabyte, but we lost a little bit. Um, they're, they're just pure scenery, and they are what I call off-site, and they are sim-linked into X-Plane. However, I will save the X-Plane scenery tutorial for another day. Okay, so you can see on my quick access bar, I have uh, something called P3D Core and P3D Add-ons. The way I do it is these two drives here, C and E, these are both M2 SSDs. One of them, actually, sorry, both of them are 960 Pros, Samsung 960 Pros. They are rapid, absolutely rapid. If I was to get some sort of hardware tester here to re uh, do the read-write speed, you're talking literally gigabytes a second. It's fantastic. So the way I do things is I put all my flight sim on my E drive. And when I say my flight sim, I mean P3D and X-Plane. But what I do then is I also put the add-ons and the scenery and the aircraft and the utilities in a different folder. So if I go to Flight Sim, I've got P3D here, I've got X-Plane there, and then there's some other stuff. So Flight One, Navigraph Old Prop, these are the companies that are making add-ons for P3D and X-Plane. If I click P3D, then inside here, you have a bunch of folders. And I just noticed that I still have a folder called Keck Box Simulations. That's the black box stuff. Um, so inside here, I have a bunch of folders. Uh, and then I have P3D Core. Now, I try my hardest to keep P3D Core clean. And wh when I say clean, I mean completely just default with no modifications to any of the files, no additions. Uh, everything at this moment, as far as I'm aware, can be done outside of the simulator. However, I am a little lazy. And as you can see, some things have managed to sneak in. Now, the problem with what I'm about to show you is that not all developers are on board with this system. I do not understand why. This add-on XML method has been available for literally years 
and it's gotten better over time. And I now know that you can drive aircraft, scenery, utilities, whatever you like through the add-on XML method. So if you're a developer, and I know some developers do watch these videos, can you please, for the love of God, make your add-ons in such a way that we can split them out of the core folder and run them separately? There's no excuse. So the idea behind this is if P3D becomes corrupt or something insane happens to this core folder, I can literally just reinstall P3D into this. And because the add-ons are separate, which they're in this folder, which has nothing to do with P3D core, then the once we've reinstalled it, the uh, P3D core will read from this folder once we've done a few things, and then we will have our scenery back. Okay, in my P3D add-ons folder, I have essentially five or six folders that separate all the add-ons into different categories. So zero is aircraft core, and inside there I have A2A, FS Labs, the Mad Dog, and the Vertex DA62. Then inside scenery library core, I have the libraries for Fly Tampa, FSDG, and UK2000. Inside number two, which is the scenery, I have all the airport scenery that I have installed. And then in number three, I have the city stuff. So uh, if you have purchased any of the cities from, let me see if I can pronounce this, Zhvietsky, I think it is, design, then you will see, uh, then you will put it in this one. And then lastly, utilities. So for example, BVAI, which is the AI package or spotlights from FS Labs or uh, Ultimate Traffic Live, etc., etc. In the last folder, called software not in use this is all of the add-ons in one folder and each of these folders contains an add-on xml file which links back if you look at this path here links back to wherever the aircraft or utility or scenery is installed so for example this is the vertex da62 well the path for that as i showed you is in e flight sim so there it is p3d p3d add-ons and then aircraft core and then vertex and you can see here sim objects airplanes vertex and it's there so that will load into the sim okay okay so i've showed you the way i've structured things now we just need to do one step by default p3d will scan documents p3d version 4 add-ons for any folder that has an add-on xml now technically i can move these three and i could put them into the p3d add-ons and then the corresponding folder for those but as i said i got lazy so by default it will only scan this folder and that's it if you want P3D to scan a different folder, all you do is head to local disk C and then program data. Now, if you can't see program data, click view and then options and then view again, and then make sure show hidden files, folders, and drives is selected. And then you can hit apply and you'll see it. But anyway, okay. So once you've done that program data and then find Lockheed Martin, uh, which, sorry, I just clicked it and went back. Then P3D version 4. And inside here, you'll find an addons.cfg. Double click that and open it. Okay, once you've opened it, you will see probably nothing, but that doesn't matter. You may see some add-ons that are living inside the documents folder, and that's fine. You may see nothing. For me, I have a bunch of stuff already loaded. Now, if I was to run P3D and then reopen this file, you would find that nothing would be in it apart from the stuff that's in the documents P3D add-ons folder. And the reason for that is I haven't put anything in this folder that has an add-on XML. And some of you might say, well, Matt, there's a bunch of add-on XML files in software not in use. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. 
but it reads the root folder. It doesn't read into it, which is why you can do this. So it looks into all of these and it just goes, okay, is there an add XML in there? Nope. Okay, move on. Is there a nope? Okay, move on and so on and so forth. So if I was to stick an add on XML here, like right underneath Vertex DA62 and sim linked all of those into it, then it would show. Okay, so back to the add-ons.cfg. At the top, you will see this, discovery path dot zero, and then the path to the add-ons. So all I've done is I've said discovery path, i.e. discover the add-ons in a path. Do you remember when you used to have aircraft liveries and you had to add them in the aircraft.cfg? And you would look down the list and you would find flight sim dot x dot x dot one or two or three or four or five. Well, this is the same concept. The zero is there to just say, look, this is the first one, although it's zero. You could technically put one. I think it would be fine. Uh, and if you were then to have another discovery path, then you would literally just type discovery path dot one. And then as long as you follow the same convention, so it could be... Um, planes, for example, uh, then you will be able to, if I put active true there, then you will be able to use that path as well. So if I put E, if I went to my E drive and, and put planes, then it would, it would discover it. So all you're doing is telling it to look in a specific place. And once you've done that, that's all you need to do. All of this stuff below it doesn't matter. This is what it loads in by itself. So if I went uh, into P3D right now, which I'm going to do and run it as administrator, you'll see that it loads relatively quickly and it's building the database because I've removed all the scenery to show you stuff for this video. Once it's loaded, we'll go back to that addons.cfg and you'll see that apart from a few things that are already loaded in that documents folder that I showed you, everything is gone. There is also a quick way inside the sim when it's loaded to be able to see what is being loaded. The bottom here, there's an add-ons button, and here you go. You can see that the only things it's loaded are Orbex, Object Flow, and it actually tells you the, the directory, so I don't need to go and get it. Um, old Prop Immersion Man Manager, which is the chase plane stuff, Mad Dog, which is there, and then Sode, which is there. So if I now close P3D, and go back to program data and then Lockheed Martin and then P3D and then addons.cfg, you'll see that there's very little here. Now, you might say to yourself, okay, Matt, what is, what is going on? Why would you do that? Like, it's just so much work. Well, how many times have you installed an add-on and then run P3D and it just doesn't work? And you have no idea why and you don't know the culprit and then you end up uninstalling it and reinstalling it. And that's a process that takes so long. Like, can you really be bothered? I know I can't. I've been doing this now for, what, a decade at least. And I think I'm at a point now where I probably reinstall my flight sim once a year as opposed to once a week, which is what it used to be like. Um, but, but the reason is, is, quite, is quite simple. I can go into this folder and I can select any of these and I can drag them out and I can say, right, I want to fly to this place. Now, by default, I always have the libraries in and loaded. So if I now open P3D, you will get a, a, a pop-up to enable the stuff we just dragged. So if I, if I show you uh, FSDG, sorry, flight temper libraries, yes. FSDG airport files, yes, add-on manager, FS dream team, and the exclude, and the common library, and that's it, and it will load it. Now, if, for example, I installed Heathrow, and Heathrow is in this list, and all of a sudden P3D doesn't load, then all I need to do is just drag this, or the, the, the relevant Heathrow folder, into software not in use, and it will remove it from P3D, and then P3D will load again. So you can systematically go through your add-ons and figure out which one is causing the problem, and then try and fix it. Nine times out of 10, it's an error with the user, I'm not gonna lie. 
uh, you know, that one in 10 chance that there is a problem with the software, at least then you have a, a way of, of showing the developer that, look, I excluded everything apart from this and this happened, etc., etc. So let's have a look at the actual structure of an add-on XML file. Let me grab Heathrow. Actually, you know what? Let me grab Copenhagen because that has land class too. Right, so I'll paste this in and we'll open it up. So add on the XML. So you can write this add on XML yourself. You can copy this one. Uh, it's entirely your choice. But essentially, you can just change the category to fit whatever you need it to load. So if we look at Copenhagen and then we open up our uh, Explorer and we head to scenery core because that's where it is living right now and we open up copenhagen you'll see inside there is a copenhagen on its own and there is an lc now the lc stands for land class and that needs to load after the scenery now the weird thing with the added xml is if you the, the things at the top will load last so this is going to be above this in the grand scheme of things so what you need to do is in this case, put the LC at the top as an add-on component. You can see it there. Give it a category, give it a path, and give it a name, and make sure the name is unique, otherwise it won't load. And then just follow the steps. So in here, it's just scenery. So you can see we're just loading scenery. And then if we go back uh, in this one, you can see we've got effects, scenery, and texture. Doc, doc is just documents. You don't need to bother with that. And you can see here, scenery, texture, effects. Now, if you look, uh, the category for scenery is scenery. Category for texture is texture. Category for effects is effects. If you had sim objects, you could give it a category of sim objects. If you had, uh, I don't know, I can't think of any on the fly, but you can basically just give it a category. You can find all of this on the in the P3D kind of wiki SDK thing if you really want to look into it. But once you've got the hang of this, it's really, really simple. And then this, this add-on XML will dictate to P3D what to load. And then it's simple. So if I just run P3D right now, you'll see that it'll pop up saying, you want to load Copenhagen? Absolutely do I want to load Cop uh, Copenhagen. And then if we look in the add-ons when, uh, when it loads up, you'll see that the LC is now below the airport because, as I said, the top bit of the XML loads last. Okay, so if I hit add-ons and then we look, you can see now that the uh, Copenhagen fly Tampa is right there. Okay, now we can look at what I use as far as graphical settings. There is this weird conspiracy, and I don't know where it's come from, that I have some like weird version of P3D or some weird version of Windows that makes my sim look incredible. Honestly, I actually think that my sim has a lot more room for improvement, and I do try my best every single day to, to tweak it a little bit, to make it a little bit better, but it's still nowhere near where I want it to be. Now you have to remember, I have a really nice computer, and it's all overclocked, it's got a nice graphics card, okay, it's not RTX, but it is a 1080 Ti GPU, which is completely fine. Um, and I do all of my recording via an external capture card, which goes to a second PC. So now I'm when I'm recording, I don't have the burden of trying to encode live on the same PC that I'm trying to uh, run the simulator on. Hence why I can record at 60 FPS and everything is dandy. So... I like to keep my flight sim very, very minimalistic. And so there is a couple of things that I definitely recommend you buy. The first one is something called Rex Worldwide Airports HD. I'm going to open it now and show you. It's got some weird loading noise. I don't know why developers put loading noises on their applications. It is annoying. Please stop doing that. Okay, so I use a saved theme, um, which I made, and apparently I can't publish it. But basically what this does is this changes all of the default buildings, lighting, ground environment, vehicle models, 
uh, but all of the default stuff. So if I have to fly into a default airport, uh, or maybe I'm flying into an airport that's got scenery that's a bit, uh, scenery that's freeware even, uh, then this kicks in and it's fantastic. So this is recommendation number one. You can customize it to how you like, then just press OK. Uh, and you'll see, I mean, if you look through what's available, it, it's just insanely detailed. And I think it's in 4K as well. Let me just check. Uh, okay, just as high definition, but it's, it's very, very good. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, I don't want to back up. I've already done that. Okay, so that's the Rex Worldwide Airports HD out of the way. Next up is something called Rex Skyforce 3D. Now, this is a weather engine and a texture environment, cloud environment, all in one. Um, unfortunately, and I think the, the guys at Rex know this, their weather engine is is not up to up to the same par or on the same par. Does that even make sense? As the Active Sky guys, um, however, they are getting there. So as far as the weather engine, I don't use this. I use Active Sky, but I do use this for its graphics because they're amazing. So if you uh, open up this little sidebar here, and uh, you can go to themes, and there's a million and one themes that you can browse. At the moment, I am using. Uh, the Thopat 3.0 one, uh, which is all here. You can see it's, it's just insane. Uh, and you can switch through any of the ones you want. Uh, there's a community tab as well. So you can go and look for people's own settings. Uh, look, there's one here that's got a five-star rating. And then there's this one that's got a five-star rating. Um, but my mine for now is uh, Thopat. You can also, if you own PTA, there's PTA integration which allows you to basically install a preset using any of these and it will show you what they look like. Um, this is a really nice tool. And even if I wasn't the owner of PTA, I would say the same thing. They, they, uh, Rex guys have always been uh, extremely supportive towards, towards PTA. And, uh, you know, we're all thoroughly grateful for that. Um, so... That is that is what I use uh, Rex Skyforce for. I'm hoping that eventually they'll get their weather engine on par with Active Sky, and when they do, I will use it because uh, oh, also the clouds too. The clouds need to be a uh, less 2D sprite-y and more 3D, but I'm sure they'll work on that. Okay, so that's basically those two. Uh, that's what I install, and then of course the last thing is is PTA. PTA is relatively simple to use. Just run it as administrator. Load the preset. Um, I'm using this one by Saldo at the moment because I was testing something with uh, water squares. It's very annoying, but whatever. Um, if you uh, just load the preset that you want, so preset and then open, and then you can just load it, and then actions, and then just apply it, and it will apply everything that needs uh, that it needs to apply, and uh, you're done. <laughs> really simple. Really, really simple. Um, I, I did try tomato shade for the reflections, but they uh, they broke, and I've not got around to really fixing them properly yet. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, I tried env text, didn't didn't really get on with that, so I uh, I went back to Rex, uh, and that is basically that. Now I used to use Nvidia Inspector. I no longer do because it doesn't need it. I don't know. I don't know what they've done. Uh, the guys at Lockheed Martin. But P3D now seems to do a hell of a lot better in the graphics world than it used to. And it really doesn't need any help now. I, I think uh, I think they've done well to, to bring it to that point. They've just included PBR with their latest update. So the PMDG stuff has a uh, nice PBR. The Mad Dog has PBR. Um, I actually don't know who else has PBR, but there's definitely a couple more that have PBR. Um, and so uh, it, it's looking really really nice really really nice my settings i've showed them a million times on twitch but i'll show you them on here i'm going to just whiz through them very quickly what i will do is i will uh, take screenshots of these and uh, i will leave also my p3d config in the video description so you can download it use it whatever um and play around with it and if you get better results than me please tell me and let me have a go with them because you know sharing is caring and all that Anyway, general stuff, you can see pause on task. It's annoying. You tab out. 
uh, and it pauses. Tab by it's just stupid, so I don't even know why that's in the sim. Uh, prompt and exit. Well, this is something that needs to be checked because if you don't and you accidentally click the X, it will go without saying, are you sure? Uh, use system time for default, default settings up to you. Like all of these settings are up to, uh, up to you. The screenshot format, I would leave it PNG. It's, it's basically uh, when you press V in the sim, it sends a picture to pictures, P3DV4, and then you get stuff like this which is all PNG, and I reckon uh, the quality is actually pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, we could look at these all day, but we're not going to. Um, from that uh, information, I have all the labels turned off. Uh, the primary text is turned on so I can see stuff uh, with GSX. Um, all of this, again, is, is your preference. Again, sound is your preference. Mute on lost focus is something that I think everybody should probably uncheck. As far as traffic, I don't run any because it causes um, issues with FPS. If I run ultimate traffic, that overrules this anyway, so whatever. And realism, well, I want everything to work, except I don't want to get destroyed by, you know, some sort of pre-pube sperm cell on that sim trying to slew through me. So I turn crash tolerance to zero and I ignore the crashes. Um, the rest of it, again, is up to you. Display, well, this is each to their own. I have a GeForce uh, GTX 1080 Ti. As you can see, it's a 1440p resolution. I only have one monitor on this computer, so I don't need to black out anything, uh, but I do want to auto fill the main view. That means that it's like a borderless window mode and it's very good. I have FX AA on. AA is uh, set to eight times MSAA. Uh, and Nisotropic filtering is on uh, eight times and I'm running 4K textures. Now, 4K textures is a little bit of a myth unless you're running some of the add-ons, uh, but it's worth having just in case. VSync on, triple buffering, and limited FPS. It basically locks it to the refresh rate of your monitor, which for me is 144 hertz. So, let's move on to the world. You've probably seen this before, but level of detail. In fact, I'm not going to read everything out. Uh, there's nothing to note apart from reflections, I suppose. Uh, the reflections are all on except for vegetation and buildings. I find that you, you can get away with like three or four, but once you more than that, you start really getting hit by bad frames. Um, the lighting, I don't use HDR because HDR is, for me and P3D, it's it's not quite there. They tried, but it, it's it's just a bit uh, a bit weird. If you try to uh, like get a natural color, it just is a bit all over the place. Uh, so I keep that off. Dynamic reflections is on low, um, and that's just for the tomato shade that I tried. But I'll probably end up turning that off. It's up to you whether you have reflections on or not. Of course, dynamic lighting, love it. They've they've really modified it now, so uh, or optimized it, should I say? So it works rather well. Landing lights illuminate the ground. Well, I don't know what why what <laughs> why why wouldn't you want them to not do that? Uh, whatever. Lens flare, I don't like it. Shadows high, medium, everything on cast apart from particles, clouds, and no shadow fight content and receivers internal, external, and buildings. And then the weather, well, it's all done by Active Sky, so you could technically just ignore this. I would, however, make sure all three are checked here if you want the uh, the effects and the precipitation and stuff like that. Um, key assignments, access assignments, calibration, this is all relevant to you as a individual. I disabled my controllers in P3D and I run them through FSUI PC, so I would never touch any of this anyway because it's all disabled. Um, if you want to use force feedback, if you've got force feedback, great. And... Uh, then you've got direct input versus raw input, again, for you to figure out. So, that is basically, in a nutshell, my P3D. I have it networked uh, for things like Active Sky and uh, PFPX and Project Fly and stuff like that, which, if you really care about how to network uh, P3D, I may do a video on it, but there is actually a really nice video from Frugal who shows you how to do it, and uh, I, I followed that meticulously from uh, from day one, and every time I reformat, I tend to go back to it. Uh, but I suppose I can throw my spin on it and show you how I do it. It's it's really, really simple. Um, it's, it's just a case of uh, throwing in this folder here a 
uh, simconnect.ini. <laughs> it's that simple. And then just making sure that the IPs match up in the uh, in the app data. So up to you whether you want to see that or not. Uh, I, I'm easy. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask them below, or I would invite you into my Discord, uh, discord.gg forward slash Matt Davis. And uh, there's a support channel in there if you want to get some support, or you can ask in the comments. I don't really mind. I will do my best to answer them. And if you would like to see me go through something else, then please let me know because, uh, well, I'm only human and my creativity does tend to run low, but this was requested, so I figured I'd do it. As far as tutorials go, I am not the type of person to have, like, fancy animations and, you know, all of these illustrations about what you want to do. It's just a straightforward, do this, do this, do this, do this and you'll get good results, or figure it out for yourself, and if you get better results than me, then tell me. I hope you learned something from this video. I hope it helped you out in some way or another. If it did, please let me know. If it didn't, also please let me know. That is all from me on the P3D video. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your support, as always, and until the next time. ta for now.